Father, we bless you, we honor you. In Tana Rock of Ages, we give you praise. I am that I am, we worship you, Lord. Omnipotent God, omniscience God, the Lord that changeth not. What a great God you are. What a mighty God you are. What a awesome God we are. Thank you for keeping us alive today. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you, Lord, for your healing. Thank you for your deliverance. Thank you, Lord, for all that you have done. Thank you for all you are doing. Thank you for all that you are going to do. Father, we thank you for alive today. Not by our power, by our might. We thank you because you are alive because you make us to be alive. Father, we are here for another score of sources. We pray, Lord, as you speak your word today. Let your word have a place in our heart. The Bible says some people hear the word. This word does not profit them because the word did not miss with their faith. Lord, we pray today, Lord, let this word miss with our feet. Through this word today, heal us. Because the Bible says you send your word, your word heal them. Father, let your word give us hope, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Let your word strengthen us. Let your word empower us. Let your word deliver us in the mighty name of Jesus. I don't know this teaching today, Lord. Let both the teachers and the hearers be blessed. Let all glory and honor be unto you. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. And the church of God will say amen. Wherever you are this evening as you are listening to us, I say congratulations for being alive today. We thank God over your life and your family. We thank God for keeping you, keeping you and keeping us. And thank God for making us to see another um, school of sources. Today there have been an opportunity for us to ask questions. Uh, I think the IT are doing something that okay, you can see me, then you can ask a question, we can see you as well. So that is very, very encouraging. Praise the Lord. Today we are going to look at a topic and um, look at the topic until we finish it. Um, I title it Coming Out of Valley of Life. Coming Out of Valley of Life. Brethren, no matter how deep the valley we find ourselves, God have the power to take us out of every valley we find ourselves. At this situation, at this time period, I just want to use this word to encourage us. No matter that the hope, hope is not lost. We may have lost money, we may have lost business, we may have lost anything. But as long as we are alive, hope has not lost. Coming out of the valley of life. Ezekiel chapter 37. We look for verse 1 to verse 4. Ezekiel 37 from verse 1 to verse 4. Coming out of the valley of life. He said, the Lord took hold of me and I was carried away by the spirit of the Lord into a valley filled with bones. Um, if you look at King James Version, say dry bones. Yes, verse 2. Okay, he said, 
If you look here, and he set me down in the midst of the valley, which full of bone. Yes, let's continue verse 2. Yes. And make me to pass by them around about. And behold, they were very many in the open valley. And lo, they were very dry. Very dry. Yes, verse 3. Verse 3, yes. And he said unto me, as God is saying to every one of us today, he said, son of man, can these bones live? Question mark. And I answered, oh Lord God, thou knowest, thou knowest. Yes. Verse 4, that's where I'm going, verse 4. And he said unto me, prophesy unto this bone and say unto them, Oh, ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. I am today. I want us, wherever you are, you have the power to prophesy. You can speak to that situation. God did not speak to that situation himself. He asked that man to speak to the situation. He said, oh, he said, he asked me, he said, son of man, prophesy to this bone. The vision in the valley of dry bone." He said it can mean several things in the life of Israel. It means several things in the life of Israelites. After years in exile, and with Jerusalem destroyed, the people have given up hope. They have given up hope. They are hopeless. Just like people these days, people have given hope. Many businesses are desolate. Many families have begun to quarrel. Many things is happening. Why? Because we don't even know what is happening. Oh my God. Oh my God. Not at all. Prophet Ezekiel promise, promise of resurrection can rise. Lord, promise, promise or resurrection can rise is spark in the eras. And here in Ezekiel 7 to 20 to 28, the promise of blessing of the future golden age. If you look at if you look at Ezekiel 37, God promised them something. In fact, anytime I'm reading the book of Ezekiel 37, I like to read the one that said, he said, even though you are already in the grave, said God will have the power to bring you out of that grave. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I'm sure at one time or another, your life or you have felt that everywhere you look, you saw a pile of dead, dry bone, such as the one that that is uh, that that we have seen in the book of Ezekiel 37. Many of us have looked at our life. The only thing we can see now is what they call what I call a pile of dry bone. Valley experience make you feel as, as if your life is not better than dead. When somebody's in the valley, it's just it, it, it look like it's look it look like. It looks like that your life is not better than dry bone that is described that's described by the prophet Ezekiel in Ezekiel 37. Some people their life is the valley. Do you know some people so, some life and they, 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 are, they, are, they are they are hold up now. They are being they are just they just stop. They are not moving forward. Some not even have they don't have vision of moving forward in life. Everything is a standstill. Your situation, your circumstances may be so dead that they stink. Your hope may seem lost, but God has a way out. Brethren, you may think that your circumstances were so dead that they stink. If you remember the story in John chapter 5, when God, when Jesus Christ, oh my God, when Jesus Christ approached the, 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 the tomb of Lazarus, even the brothers, even the sisters, even, you know, John chapter 11, even the sister said, he said, he said, he has been dead, he has been buried for four days. He said, even now, he what? He stinks. So, in your situation, must, you know, it can be bad as that. In fact, it can be worse than that. You may think that everything is stinking. You may think that your situation is stinking. Mm. Many, many th you may think that there's no way out. God wants to get you out of the valley. 
God will get you out of that valley because he has the power, he has what it takes to take you out of that valley. I want you to be positive about life. I want to be positive about that situation. I want to be positive about that thing that you are going through or that situation that you are passing through. I want you to be positive because we are serving a God that can do all things. Can I hear me to that? Prophet Ezekiel does as God instructed and he see God total revived and bring bread and spirit back into what was once called dead and hopeless dry bone. I love the way the man of God answered that question. He said, he looked at the situation, those bones, those bones are very dry. And God asked him, son of a man, can this bone live? Ha! The man looked at the bone. The man looked at the power of God. He said, it's only you God that know it. It's only God that knows it. God wants to get you out of that valley. Prophet Ezekiel does as God instructed. And he witnessed God, total, God totally revive and bring bread and spirit back into what was once called dead and hopeless dry bone. Let's look at Ezekiel chapter 5. Ezekiel 37. We are reading for verse 5 now. Ezekiel 37 verse 5. Many of us are in this situation right now. But God is more than able. Thus say the Lord. They say the God to this tribe. Sure, surely I will cause bread to enter into you. And you shall live. Yes. I will put up things on you. And bring flesh upon you. I will cover with skin. And put bread in you. And you shall live. Then you shall know that I am the Lord. Brethren, God have the power to put life back into that situation. Is your business dead because of this situation? Do you think your career is dead? Do you think that any, anything, has anything been killed in your life by this situation? Is anything in your life that or you have found yourself in a hopeless situation? You don't have hope in going back to that establishment. You don't, have, you don't have hope of restarting that business. You don't have hope of restarting by that ministry. And God is saying to you, and he said, and you shall live. Then you shall know that I am the Lord. I remember the song said, be still and know that I am the Lord. See, he said, I will know God will prove himself in that situation. And you will know that he is God. And he can do all things. Just let us believe him and hold on to him. Praise the Lord. The same can happen in your life. In your situation now. God, God can revive things that have been dead. Things that have been broken. Things that have been dry in your life. God, God can revive it. It's God. He can revive it. The same God that raised up the dead of a man for after four days, he can do it. What can he not do? What can he not do? So, I just want us to believe in him and hold on to him in this situation. Brethren, what is a valley? In my geography days, my geography teacher told me, he said, a valley is the low land between two hills. That's what my geography teacher told me. Amen? And as he believe, he see the same thing. A valley is a low land between two hills. Or two mountains. Some valley are wide. Some valley are narrow, some valley are small, some are on rough ground, and some on a smooth ground. Valley it varies. Varies in depth, varies in, in, in size. Whatever your own valley may be, I don't know how deep, how slippery your valley may be. God has the power to take you out of that valley, and he will take you out in the name of Jesus. Do you know that most suicide occur in the valley? Most marriage break up in the valley. I know 
I know at this period, at this point in time, I am addressing several people today who are in the valley of life. I know I am addressing several people by this preaching. Several people have been addressed because they are in the valley of life now. People find themselves in the valley not because they want to be in the valley. But situation and circumstances has put a lot of people in the valley of life now. Situation that is occurring because nobody planned for this. Nobody expect this. It just came on us. And we are here, we are today. So he has made, he has developed, a lot of people have eaten their savings. A lot of people have begun to start eating their capitals. Some don't even have what to eat anymore. So I don't know the, I don't know the type of value you may find yourself. But one thing I know that we are serving a God they have the power and ability to take God out of any valley. And he will take you out. In the name of Jesus. You see, you may find yourself in the valley. It may be because of physical reason. Or emotional reason. Or spiritual reason. Or reason that's beyond your control and beyond your power. Whatever may be the reason, if you are going to be successful in climbing out of this valley, into the mountain, then you must recognize what is in the valley. If you want to climb out of that valley, let me tell you, no matter how deep this valley, a lot of people will come out of this valley. But then, and unfortunately, some people will not come out of the valley. It's not because God cannot take them out. It's not because God cannot take them out. So, you must first of all recognize what is the valley. The whole valley experience means different things or horrible experience that one can be passing through in life with reference to all aspects of life. So, valley can be as what you are passing through now. It can be what you are passing through before this situation. Do you know a lot of people are passing through situations before and this situation just had to it? Had to it made them to sink deeper into the valley. Oh my God. So the whole valley means different things. Or it can be horrible experience that one may be passing through in life with reference to all aspects of life. You can, it can be ministry. It can be finance. It can be marriage. It can be career. It can be spiritual. It can be academical. It can be anything. It can be anything. But from the biblical point of view, it goes beyond ordinary or literally meaning. In the book of Prophet Ezekiel, Ezekiel 37 to 4, the Bible talks about the valley of dry bones. It talks about the valley of dry bones. The valley that are full of dry bones. Before you can get a dry bones, uh, a dry bone, that means that animal, that person is dead. And that person has decayed. So, there's no flesh that thought it remain only bone. We are talking about a bone that is dry. So, in Psalm 23 verse 4, the Bible says something there. Psalm 23 verse 4, the Bible says something in Psalm 23 verse 4. It said, yea, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Because there's one, sh val uh, one valley that they call the valley of the shadow of death. So we talk about the, dry, the valley of dry bone. This is another valley. A valley of what I call the shadow of death. Say, but even though I walk through it, I will not be afraid because I have God. And that is why at this period, point in time, we should be closer to God than ever before. Which will be close to God because it is only God that can take us out of this valley. Praise the Lord. The Bible repeats the same thing in Jeremiah 31, 31 verse 40. Jeremiah chapter 31 verse 40. It talks about another valley there. Jeremiah 31 40. The Bible says something in Jeremiah 31 verse 40. The Bible says in Jeremiah 31 40, the Bible says, and the whole valley of the dead bodies and of the ashes. And all the feet as far as broke it on. Yeah, he's talking about valley and one that the feet that is full of a dead body. So we can see valleys. We see a valley of dry bone. We see a valley of dead bodies. 
and we see a valley of, of death, according to Psalm 23. Praise the Lord. The valley, the valley is a spirit that keeps people at a very low level. A valley, once again, is a spirit that keep, keep, keeps people at a very low level. It keeps you there. He's telling you, you cannot come out. But brethren, with God, all things are possible. Valley cause shame. It cause disgrace. Valley cause disappointment. Valley cause loneliness. The valley spirit will never allow one to triumph in life. People that are troubled by the valley spirit do not live up to the expectation in life. People that the spirit of valley have been troubled, they never live to fulfill their expectation. The spirit of valley made people to give up early or get discouraged. But then I want to encourage you, don't give up. Don't be discouraged. Things will get better. God will take you out of that valley. Anytime, remember Ezekiel 37, read the whole chapter. You see what happened there. You see the promise that God said, said my people said they are hopeless. They thought, they said, he said, God said, even in their grave, he said, I will break your grave and take you out. God is able to revive that situation. God is able to turn that business around for good. Brethren, COVID will go. And our life will come back to, to in fact, it will be more, will be more glorious than before. Only if we hold on to him. If we hold on to him. So, when you, when, you, when you overcome the spirit of valley, the sky will no longer, no longer be your limit. In fact, at all age, your strength will remain like that of the youth. We need to overcome the spirit of valley. We should not be depressed because of what is happening. And that's why I keep on telling us, we should hold on to God. We are children of God. And that is why I keep on saying, at this point in time, we should not follow them to spread evil news. Many of us as a Christian, that's what we do on our Facebook, on our Twitter. We spread, we know we, we, are, we are counting number of dead. No, that is discouraging. We should be positive. They built this uh, Natty Hospital of 4,000, I don't know, maybe 400 people they want to put there. But nobody is there already. Nobody, nobody, I've not even had many anybody there because God is faithful. People are praying and we believe that this thing will soon pass. We are passing through it. It will soon pass and God will be glorified. Amen. Because let's look at what I, let's look at the description of a, of a valley. Description and valley experience. Valley is a place of danger. We can see that in Psalm 23, verse 4. Valley is a place of danger. Yes, Psalm 23, verse 4. I think we have looked at it before, okay? Psalm 23, verse 4. Say, if I walk through the valley of shadow of death, so it's a place of danger. In Osea chapter 1, verse 5, valley is a place of torment. Osea chapter 1, verse 5. Valley is a place of torment. He said, it shall come to pass in that day that I will break the, the bow of Israel in the valley of Jezreel. It's a place of what? It's a place of torment. Valley is a place of lack. Some people are in the valley of lack now. Because they cannot go to work. Some people are casual workers. So, they depend on daily, daily pay. And now that's no work. What do they do? So, they are in the valley of lack. Some people, they are in a, that's what they call, that's a valley. Valley is a place of depression or weeping. Ezekiel chapter 7 verse 16. Valley is a place of what I call a place of weeping or depression. Ezekiel chapter 7 verse 16. He said, those who survive will escape and be on the mountain like the doves of the, uh, shall be on the mountains. Like the doves of the valley, all of them mourning each for its iniquity. Valley is the place of mourning. The, those, those who survive, those who did not survive, they will be in the valley of all of them, mourning each for its iniquity. Valley is a place of depression. It's a place of weeping. It's a place of mourning. 
valley is a place of loneliness. We can see that in Zika 7 verse 1. We're not going to read that again. It's a place of loneliness. Valley is a place of dryness. We have, we have seen that in Zika 7 verse 1 as well. It's a place of dryness. Valley is a place of disappointment where nothing works. Valley is a place of death. Jeremiah 31 verse 40, we have seen that. Valley is a place of battle. Genesis chapter 14, verse 8. It's a place of what? I call a place of battle. Genesis 14, verse 8. It's a place of battle. Genesis 14, 8. And the Bible says, and the king of Sodom, the king of Gomorrah, king of Adam, the king of Jerum, and the king of Bela, that is Dua, went out and joined together in the battle in the valley of Sidim. So, valley is a place of battle. So, when you are in a, when, when you are in a, in a valley, you are, you are fighting a battle. Like the old war is in the valley now. We are fighting a battle. We are fighting an invisible enemy. But God will take us, of, take us out of it in the name of Jesus. Valley is a place of trouble. You can see that in Joshua chapter 7, verse 24 to 26. Valley is a place of trouble. Valley is a place of demonic attack. And it's a, demonic of, it's, a, it's a place of demonic authors and demonic attack. You can see that in 2 Chronicles 33, verse 6 to 7. Valley is a place of darkness. Valley is a place of darkness. You can see that in Nehemiah chapter 2, verse 15 to 16. Nehemiah 2, 15 to 16. Valley is a place of confusion. It's a place of confusion. Joel 3.14, the whole world is in confusion now, and God will deliver us. Valley is a place of decision. Joel 3.14, valley is a place of misbehaving. Jeremiah chapter 2, verse 23, valley is a place of fear. It's a place of fear. What are we passing through? This is a place, that is this time of, of fear. Everybody is afraid. Have we ever go to a shop now? You stay, you stay very distant. So in fact, the people in the store prefer you pray with card instead of card, so they don't want to touch you. If you go to bank now, it's, it's one by one. So we cannot even, see, we are living in fear. We are, living, we, are, we are living in the fear. So, as we are living, that means we are having, we are experiencing what they call a valley experience. Because valley is a place of fear. Valley is a place of a low, is, is a low place. Valley is a grave. Ezekiel 39 verse 14. Valley is a place of non-achievement. It's a place of stagnation. It's a place of hatred and rejection. So, if you, so if, if you see, if, if you find yourself being in all this, and it, all, if, if any of these things happening to you, or has happened to you before, they are the spirit of valley experience. Okay. What are the power that operate at the valley? Because we must know so, that we know, so that we know how to get out of the valley. Power at the valley. This power carry out their operation at the bottom region. They bring people down from the level of, of from level of glory. They will bring them down to dust. They reduce a man. They bring him from from glory from from the seat of glory. They bring him down to dust. Just like just like in Nebuchadnezzar, was brought down from the from his throne as a king. He was brought down to begin to eat with what. To begin to, to begin to eat with the animal. He stayed seven years in the wilderness. He, said, he was brought down to a lowly place, from high place to a lowly place. Oh my God. Va when I talk about the power of the valley, they bring people down from level of to, uh, uh, strandum to the dust. They also may celebrate lot. They can reduce or wreck people through operation of the wicked power. Also, power of the valley are the breakthrough blockers. They always stand against people's progress and breakthrough. So, when this part, they stand against people's progress and breakthrough. That is the power of the valley. Praise the Lord. These are the power who say no to somebody's breakthrough. They are the power 
that do not bother people at the beginning, at the middle of their journey, but pushing, up, pushing themselves at the point of success. This power, they don't bother you when you are starting. They don't bother you at the middle. What do they do? They wait for you at the point of your success. About to succeed. The spirit of almost there but never get there. Those are the spirit, that's the wicked spirit of the valley. Today, God will deliver us in the name of Jesus. They are the, what I call, internal doubting powers. They make you to doubt yourself. They make you to doubt, even, in fact, they make you to doubt the promises and the word of God. Do you know what many people are saying about, about this, about the word of God concerning this situation now? Amen? Many people have been doubting. They have been doubting the existence of God. Because, why? Because they are experiencing, they are passing through valley. They have a valley experience. So, when you see people like that, what to do to them, you don't condemn them. You encourage them. You strengthen them from the word of God. Praise the Lord. Ah, who, the power of the valley, that walk in the valley, they are the powers that converted themselves to resist somebody and their testimony. They make sure they receive the person's testimony. They make sure the person does not have a testimony to give. They are the power of, they are, I call them satanic immigration officer at the border of a promised land. They, I call them satanic immigration officer that are standing at the what, at the point, what I call it, at the border of promised land. They will deny the person an entrance to his promised land. That is the power of the valley. And I pray once again that God will destroy that power in your life, in your business, in your family, in your career, your ministry, in the mighty name of Jesus. They are the, I call them spirit, I call them spiritual uh, uh, immigration officers. So, that once ago we are, um, we, are, we, are, we are looking, we are watching a program, we call it uh, Brother, Brother Force. A man, a, man, a, a, a man came to this country and they were looking at him. Uh, the guy said, he's, um, he said, he's, uh, he's 19. Despite everybody know that he's not 19, he was allowed to go enter. And I, some, uh, and, I, and I know somebody that came with genuine paper, get to the uh, immigration, but they said, you cannot come in. He said, him back. Satanic immigration officer. And as he's, as he's operating in the physical, the same thing he operated in spiritual. Deny people access into their promised land. They are power that contending with somebody's victory. They contend with it. They challenge it. They are the powers that dedicate to stop people's destiny in life. They are the power that make people to do those things that even you yourself know can destroy your destiny and purpose. Even though you know that this thing can destroy you, they are the power that make you to do it. When they write on a cigarette pack, it says, smokers are liable to, die, liable to die young. And people are still smoking. <laughs> Amen? They are the power to make you annoy the time of your divine visitation. So, a lot of people, is, it make them to get annoyed. Even in the day of their divine visitation. They are the power who swallows opportunity. These are the powers. These are the power that operate at the valley of life. Praise the Lord. How, ma how many remain in the valley? Why many remain in the valley? Why many still remain in the valley? That's despite the power and the promise of God to take them out of the valley. But then everything we mention, all those powers that operate in the valley, they are no match for the power of God. They are no match for the children of God. Because you are a child of God, does not mean that you cannot have this valley experience. No. Because there are some valley experience that come upon people without, without, with, unknowingly. We just find ourselves there. Like the one we find ourselves now. It's not because, see, it's not because you have seen some, so, sometimes, Sometimes I used to tell people that the only road that leads to promised land is what? Is the wilderness. Sometimes we need to pass through wilderness. Sometimes we need to pass through the valley for us to, for us to experience certain things in life. 
So, because somebody is in the valley does not mean that he has sinned, or because God has forgotten you, or because God has uh, uh, God, uh, God has abandoned you. No, God does not abandon his own. Remember, God did not abandon children make a many go. They passed, they were they were thrown to the fire. God did not abandon Daniel. God doesn't abandon his own. But why many remain in the valley? Why? Some people have stayed too long in the valley. In fact, some have lost hope of, of coming out. Some people have stayed too long in the valley. Remember God told the children of Israel, told their, God, their forefather Abraham, that they will stay in the land, in the, in the, in the, in land of Egypt for 400 years. Abi. They eventually spent 430 years. They stay longer. It's not because God cannot take them out. So, some people stay too long in the valley. In fact, some have lost hope of coming out. Some have taken, said, it's their, their cross. So, they want to cut and remain there. It is not the will of God for us to remain in the valley. Let me tell you, it is not the will of God for you to remain in that, in that situation. It is not the will of God for you to remain jobless. It is not, remain, it's not the will of God for you to remain barren. To barren. It's not the spirit of God for you to remain in that poverty. No! No, no, please listen to me. It is not, it is not the plan of God for your life to remain in the valley because, but the following fa factor keeps some people in the valley. Some factor can keep you in the valley, can make you to remain there. Some people have taken their residency in the valley and they said, This is where God wants me to be. No. The first thing that what the first thing that can keep people in the valley. Number one is, is ignorance of their level. When you are ignorant of who you are, the Bible says, yeah, for those, it said, those who know they are God shall be strong and do as well. Number one, we need to first of all discover ourselves. Who are you in Christ Jesus? Many of us who don't know who we are, we don't know the power that we carry. The Bible says, even if a child, if a body, if somebody says, I've said it here before, if you are if you are here to the throne and you are seeing a child, you 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 behave like a slave. You be you'll be living your life like a slave. So you should first of all discover, we should discover the person who, who, who we are in Christ Jesus. Some people do not see the need of them to leave the valley. Some do not even see the need to leave the valley. They believe that it is their cross. So they remain there. Even some even some, even some, they thought that this is how God has designed their destiny. This one, this is this is the way God has designed them to be. Some people, they just ah, this is this is where God wants want them to be. They don't, they are not even trying of coming to that valley. They believe everybody cannot be a leader. If everybody is a leader, who are going to follow? Why don't you be a leader and other people follow you? Praise the Lord. That's one that people say that if God don't discover, you cannot recover. So failure to discover your present situation will lead you to stay at the point. Stay, continue for you. It will keep you perpetually in the valley. You have to first of all recognize that you are better than this. Ha. The Bible talks about the prodigal son. Everything. Sometimes we look at it, that story, we look at it from different angles. We can look for different angles, but that's one thing I look at. The guy gets at a place in his life. He said, I am better than this. Ah, ah. He has eaten everything. The Bible says, the guy is even happy to eat it with the pig, if they allow him. <laughs> but one day, the guy said, ah, ah. Ah, ah. No. I will arrive at, I will go to my I will, he, he, at a point in time he made a decision and he turned back. That's a point in time your life you have to make a decision. And you need to first of all look at yourself. I am better than this. But then God has you are fearfully and wonderfully made. God has deposited a lot of things in you that you must you must not allow to waste. Don't be like that guy that buries talent. Don't bury your talent. You are better than this. May I tell you, you can start again. You can start all over again. 
it is not over until you have become a winner. Praise the Lord. And what are the things? What are the things that, that can keep you in perpetual the valley? Failure to pass God test. God tests and trials before trusting us the more. God needs to test you and try you before he can give more to you. To which more is given, much is expected. At every stage of our growth, we are tested. Because testing us always precedes promotion. The problem, the problem we pass through are evidence of his testing. May I just say something to us? From this situation, we need to learn. Who can ever thought that a situation will come like this that can make that can that will not allow us to gather as a church? It has happened. But there is a lesson that God is teaching us that is possible for church to be online. That's that. God is teaching us lesson. And until we pass the test, just like, it's, like, just like in, in, in our day's university, that's what they call, the, they call, they call pericocyte. They call it pericocyte. That means you need to pass it before you do other course. So failure to pass that course, you won't do the next course. So, if you don't pass God's test, Remember, the whole essence of passing through wilderness to promise land, God wants to teach the Israelite lesson. He wants to, he, every stage in life, God wants to teach them how to trust him. But they fail. Only people that pass that test, only Caleb and, what, and, 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 and Joshua pass the test. They said, we are able to take the land. Many, with all the test, with all the miracles, all the wonders, every the, that God performed, God just wants to tell them, trust me. Trust me. And they don't, and they fail the test. And brethren, as many of them that fail the test die in the wilderness. That is why. That's why many people die in the wilderness. That's why many people die in the valley. Because we don't pass the test. We need to pass it. God is saying something. Some people must have left the valley long ago, but they fail God test. Some fail by dodging the test, by looking for solution where there's no solution. So, we must pass the test. What is God saying? What is the message for this season? Trust God. Trust God. As men that, are trust, that trust God, God will carry us out of this situation on, without any scratch. He, he, he has done it before. And he will do it again. Psalm 16 verse 4. In New King James Version, Psalm 16, verse 4. Psalm 16, verse 4. Psalm 16, verse 4. Psalm 16, verse 4. Brethren, we must pass this test. He said, Their sorrow shall be multiplied. Who is still after another God? So, this is not the time to run from pillar to post. If you don't want your soul to be multiplied, this is time to hold on to God tightly, more than before. Their drink offering of blood, I will not offer, nor take up their name on my lips. I will never mention their name. That's what the Bible is saying. Say, those who run after God, say, after other God, their soul get multiplied. So, stay with God. Pass the test. Rely on God. God is more than able. God is faithful. All his promise and yea and there. Amen. Yes. What keep many people in the valley? 
lack of willingness to move up. A lot of people who are in the valley are contented with the situation. They are neither ready or willing to move out of the valley. This happened when they ignore simple instruction to move to the greater height. They just stay there. Go to the cellars to the promised land. They say cross over. They said this, they said the children of Anak are there. So they refuse to cross. Amen. And they die in the wilderness. Lack of willingness. What keep people in the valley? What keep people in the valley? Feeling of having of, of having arrived. You thought you have arrived. I keep on telling people, no number, no matter the level you are, there's a level higher than that. We should not, we should not, we should not have the spirit of the crab. Crab does not want to go out. If you put, does somebody say, if you put 200 crab in a basket, say they will not escape. Why? As one is climbing out, other is pulling him back. Brethren, we need to forge ahead. We need to manifest our full potentials to the glory of God. They, no matter the level you are now, there's a level higher than that. That is why, that is why some people are seeing the valley. Why people still remain in the valley? In discipline and pleasure living. In discipline. It's another factor which will make one to die in the valley. Every form of immorality is sin. So, God cannot behold the sin. And that is why he loves not the world or the things behind. He said we should not love the world. Because God, see, at this point in time, we should hold on to God. Because in discipline and pleasure of life, we keep us in the valley. Finally, what is schemes of people in the valley? Loss of learning. Teachable and a broken spirit. Some people, they have... They don't have a teachable heart. I was saying yesterday when I was leading prayer. See, when we come to God, we must come to God in humility. We must come to God in humility and know the God that you are coming to. Some come to God like God is just their boy. If you have that kind of unteachable spirit, nobody can talk to you. Nobody can correct you. When somebody is preaching, say, who is, that, who, is, who is preaching there? Ah, this person. You thought you know more than anybody. And the word of God, they are new every day, every day, every day. If you have that kind of attitude and spirit, brethren, you have just begun your journey in the valley. Your residency in the valley will be extended. So, today, we are talking about coming out of the valley. We are looking at the book of Ezekiel chapter 37, we are look at what is valley, what is the valley, and what are the spirits that operate in the valley. We look at out, no, we look at, we have look at um, what keep people in the valley. We said ignorance, failure to pass God's test, lack of willingness to move up, feeling of av having arrived in discipline or pleasure living. We talk about uh, we talk about loss of learning, teachable and broken spirit. If all these things are present in your life, or one of them is in your life, brethren, your journey in the valley has just started. So by next week, by grace of God, we look, we, we look, we, we conclude this topic by looking at how to come out of the valley. How do you come out of the valley? Before we listen, we, we before we take questions and contribution from, uh, um, from any, 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 any people over there, let me tell you, it is a plan and purpose of God to come out of the valley. God does not want you to remain in that valley. But if you are in the valley of life today, you need to, the, what God is saying to you, you must listen and learn and pass the test. And God will help us in the mighty name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Any question for me there? Or any contribution? Is there anything from anybody there? Yes, sir.
God have the power? Yes. God has the power to take out out of every valley. No matter how deep your valley may be, the Bible says, on that is a valley in arm. The hand, the hand of God is... God has power. Yes, yes. God has brought us to the end of our valley. No matter how much. I don't know. Was my question gotten? I think I did post it. Eh? Brandon, come again. We didn't hear you. Oh, all right. Yeah, good. So the question is, um, uh, we are told that valley is a place of depression and loneliness um, to mind. So I have two questions on that. Okay. The first question is, can the Bible help me? Yeah, yeah, good, good. So, so the question, the question is, is, is um, uh, we are told uh, we are that told valleys, valleys, valleys of depression and loneliness um, tonight. Um, so, so I have two have questions, questions on that. On that. Okay. The first the question first is, question is can, the Bible can the Bible help me? Help me? Oh, If you are depressed, you should find joy and happiness in the word of God. Because the promise of God, they are here and they are amen. Because God, the Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 8, it says God is able to make all grace abound towards you. God is able to make all grace abound. So God is able to take you out of any, any state of depression by believing in the word of God, by believing. By, by knowing the word of God, by believing in it, and by practicing, uh, practicing, uh, practicing it. Because God is able. Praise the Lord. And if you look at Psalm 135 verse 5, it says, The Lord is great, and our Lord is above all gods. Our God is able, our God is great, our God is above all gods. That means God is above all situation that you are passing through. Praise the Lord. Then what is, what is the second question, sir? Is the Bible enough to save me from this? The Bible is enough to save you. Because there are, there are a lot of promises in the word of God. Like the Bible says, if you look at the book of Ezekiel that we look at, it, God take the Spirit of God take Ezekiel to a dry bone and he asked him, can this dry bone live? He said, it's only God that knows. And God asked him to prophesy. So, as he prophesied, the power of God now come into operation. And that means for you to come out of that valley, that depression, sometimes you need to prophesy. You need to speak the word of life into your situation. So by speaking the word of life, by prophesying to your, to your life, your, that situation will, will respond to the word of God. And that negative situation will turn back to a positive situation. 
So the word of God is more than enough to help you in any situation. Praise the Lord. Yes, the third question. What should be my first step when I pray this way? When your first step is one of us, is first of us to pray. When you feel this way, the first step you need that is to invite God into that situation. Brethren, I was saying here, I said it is on Sundays. I said, sometimes we struggle with situation, not because we're not born again, because we fail to invite God to that situation. And I use example of the apostle that Jesus Christ was in their boat. And the boats are about to about to what capsize. They were struggling on their own. They trying to they, they trying to to struggle. They trying to redeem the situation on their own. But when their strength failed, and they think that they are dying, they run to Jesus. Say, Master, you don't care if you perish, and they rebuild the storm. Brethren, invite Jesus to your situation. Don't do it alone. Don't struggle alone. We have a helper. We have a friend in Jesus that is able to take out of, our, uh, out of every situation. Until we invite him to that situation, we may be struggling on our own. Praise the Lord. Yes. Any other question from me? Or oh, are we done? Praise the Lord. From Brandon again. Okay. We have learned tonight that the present pandemic is a valley. Yeah. Many youths are pulled towards lustful and evil desires, mm. e.g. pornography, mm. in, the, in these times in search of something to fill their emptiness. Mm. James 1.14, what practical things can the church do in this trying time to quench youth hunger and thirst? I think what the church can do is what we are doing now is to encourage you because now it is it is not a situation that okay we can uh, we can uh, organize uh, what do you call it uh, any uh, any event for anybody, but I think this is the point that we should we should check on ourselves on our spiritual level by calling ourselves and encouraging ourselves in the Lord. The Bible says it said it said it said David encouraged himself in the Lord. This is time for us to encourage ourselves in the Lord. This is time for us to, to feed our mind with spiritual things. This is time to feed our mind the things of the Lord, things that will prosper us. This is not time to feed our mind, our eyes with, thing, with worldly things that will bring us down. There are a lot of things that you can do. You can study your Bible, watch Christian movie, you know, and so on and so on. And listening to sermons, a lot of sermons. So you can do that and study and pray. So this is what we can do. These are the practical things we can do at this point in time. And you can look, you can form a group, like some people in the church now, they're having what they call, they're having Bible study in, you know, the, the youth, the, some groups are having Bible studies within themselves. Some certain times, some people are praying together through, uh, uh, through what they call it, through internet. So there's many things we can do. So we can organize ourselves to a group, even in this point in time, and discuss the word of God and talk about your challenges. Wherever you are, you are, you, you are feeling lowly or you are feeling down, so you can, you can throw it out there and people will encourage you. People, will, people that have passed transmission before, they will help, we need to help ourselves. This point in time should be our brother's keeper. Praise the Lord. So those are the things that we can do. Those are the things church can do at this point in time. And, uh, and like we're trying to make sure that, okay, we have services, we have a lot of things, we encourage ourselves, we call ourselves, and we can have this cell group as we, as we teach ourselves and study the word of God. Praise the Lord. Yes, praise the Lord. Brethren, that, that brings us to the end of today's um, School of Success. Okay, one more question there before we, we call it a day. Good, um, Minister Oikuni. Okay. To add to Pastor's message, okay. in the valley, there is a high concentration of doubt. Yes. So we need to recheck our trust level with God. Amen. This can be built by the study of the word Amen. and prayer coupled with counseling. Amen. Amen. That's true. That's true. That's true. Because in the valley, there are a lot of, you know, a, a lot of people begin, even these days, people begin to doubt the word of God. Not begin to doubt the promise of God. And because, to be honest, this is the valley experience. So this is the time. So by next week, by the grace of God, we look at it. How to come 
uh, how to come out of the valley. About let me say it again. It is the will of God to bring every one of us out of the valley. Praise the Lord. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you because you are God. We bless, we honor, we adore you. Thank you, Lord, for your word that was sent to us this evening. Thank you, Lord, because it's your will to take us out of every valley of life. Father, I pray, Lord, by your mighty power, by your everlasting hand, no matter how deep our valley may be, Father, please take us out in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we pray that none of us will die in the valley in the mighty name of Jesus. Every forces, every power that have determined to keep us in the valley, destroy them in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, as every seed that enemy have sown to the life of your children because of this valley experience, Lord, I pray, let those seeds be destroyed in the mighty name of Jesus. Whatever we may be struggling with in our valley that determined to keep us there, Father, by your mighty power, deliver us in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, take us to the mountain top, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Give us a new song to sing. Let only be glorified. Father, by the time we come back next week to Lord for the second part of this teaching, Lord, I pray you will open our heart of understanding to the glory of your name. Thank you, precious Father, for in Jesus' name we pray with thanksgiving. The grace in fellowship. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet pleasure of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, God, grace and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Before we share our monthly confession, we should not forget Friday is our only communion service from 7 to 8. So you communion forever you are in your house and you know, get something, drink, or bread, whatever God, whatever you may want to use as your only communion uh, element, God will bless it and sanctify it. And we empower it and we work for you in the name of Jesus. This is my season of total victory. I claim the victory through the blood, through the Jesus Christ, because I'm a child of God. No weapon formed against me will prosper. The Lord is with me as a mighty terrible one. Therefore, I am victorious over sickness, disease, and over any killer virus. I shall conquer and soar in every area of my life. The Lord shall raise me out of the dungeon to sit with kings and queens. As I proceed into this new season, victory shall be my testimony and success shall be my portion. I will rejoice for every dry bone shall rise again. God's blessing shall be upon me in this season. I shall be the wonders of my generation. The Lord will make his face to shine upon me. His favor will lift me up. When men say there is a casting down with gratitude, I shall declare that there is a lifting for up for me. I shall mount up the horse of success and ride into the realm of total victory. I shall sing the song of victory and chant for joy. I believe it, I confess it, I receive it in Jesus' name. God bless you. Thank you.